Now, when I was talking to you earlier, um, we're always thinking about the surface material, but it's really what's under the surface mm -hmm. that's more important and uh, sort of the layers for moving water. Tell me a bit how this works. Okay. Well, um, everybody naturally sees the surface and that's what they're excited about. That's the aesthetic that they're excited about. But critical to paving is the structural support that's underneath because mm -hmm. you're putting traffic, cars, um, people um, on your patio, people, cars on your driveway, small trucks. Um, so normally what you see, and this is what we've used under the um, impervious side of the uh, road, this is just a standard ag base and um, what's in here is actually limestone aggregate that's ranging in size from an inch and a half down to, through the fines, down through all this fine material. And that's the powdery stuff. That's the, yeah, that's, that's the powdery, it's almost like a dust. Mm -hmm. But that, that gets compacted down um, to provide the structural support. And in, the, in this case, these concrete pavers have been put on top of, of the system. Okay, now for our previous system, we have a similar base, but a, a little bit different. Yes, um, in a permeable paving system, uh, the critical piece is what happens to the water once it moves through the surface material. It has mm -hmm. to have an area where it's stored. If the, con if the um, soil underneath is compacted for structural purposes, where is it going to go? Um, of course, in Oklahoma, there's a lot of clay. Yeah. There's not a lot of opportunities for infiltration. So we need a storage layer. Um, we do this in aggregate. This is the base layer that's underneath this, this uh, project that we're looking at now. These are, they call this a three inch class A rock, but basically these are large three, and a, three inch to inch and a half in size. And what they do, they get compacted down on each other. And then this becomes, all the voids in here become our storage layer. Mm -hmm. This is actually, uh, in, this, in this application, this layer is actually 14 inches thick. Is that where all, or the majority of the water That's where the, the majority of the water is stored. Okay. Uh, but the, the, the key piece to this is it's going to be compacted down. The structure mm -hmm. itself is going to, to, the rock is going to support the load, um, but there's no fines, no small particles in there to clog it up. Okay, and you can see here there's quite a bit of water mm -hmm. being stored mm -hmm. in those pore spaces. Now, you had mentioned that we have clay, and underneath this you're probably going to find some clay uh, would we need to put an underdrain system to drain that out? So, um, in this we're this particular application, uh, we're looking at some uh, research on it. We're isolating the system with a liner, mm -hmm. separating the uh, the subbase rock from the soil. We also have an underdrain system to release that water slowly um, at an out, and then it moves across the grass before it moves into the creek. Okay. Now what's on top of the uh, base layer? So after, after this, you need to kind of uh, move up in your um, aggregate size. So here we have smaller aggregate. Again, this has no fines, no small particles. These are about an inch and a half, um, an inch to inch and a half in size. This sits on top of the three inch. Um, there's a, we have about two inches of, of this. Following that, we have a small bedding layer. Mm -hmm. And these are really small chips. Uh, again, no fines allowed, um, so that air, the water moves through it very um, efficiently. Um, so these chips are about three eighths of an inch. There, they they're about an inch thick. Then the then the pavers that you see, the concrete pavers that you see, sit on top of that. And you can also see in the cracks, these three eight inch chips um, are also swept into the cracks and, and compacted into the, into the cracks there. Um, so this is the key. The critical piece on a permeable system is that the water can flow through. If you're using aggregate for that, for that substrate, then there's no fines involved in that. Now when we get to the surface, there's different options available. Um, this is what we have in place here, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell me how correct. these work. This is a, a Priora paver, um, and so it's made out of concrete, mm -hmm. and what it's actually doing is um, they slide together, they have this gap um, on the edges here, and so this is the same gap where you put where the 3 8 chips go in, mm -hmm. um, but this is where the water moves through. It moves through the joints. The paver itself is not um, porous, okay. but the joints are the porous. Joints are. And there's different styles there's, available. Yeah, there's a lots of different styles available mm -hmm. in this. This is more of a this is more of a um, 
detail, maybe more for a patio application. Mm -hmm. This, again, it's not on the all the way around joints, but it's in these center areas that the water, there'd be columns of those 3 8 chips. And that's where our water will move through here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another option is to have a mixed surface using these types of pavers um, where we could plant inside them mm -hmm. or use some gravel. Mm -hmm. in so this they call this a grass pave system. Mm -hmm. um, so again, a concrete paver type system. This would need to sit on a sub base structure, mm -hmm. um, and um, but you could fill these these with soil. You wouldn't want to compact that down. You could plant grass in here, or mondo mm -hmm. might be a nice application. Mondo grass might be a ni nice application. Sure. Or you could either fill this with gravel as well to allow for more infiltration. I've also seen a similar material with a plastic mm -hmm. grid. There are some other grass pave systems. Mm -hmm. um, they, they use a geo grid system, almost a, a plastic honeycomb system, but they work um, in a very similar way as this, so where you're mixing soil or gravel through that, through that um, structural element okay. and then allowing infiltration that way. Okay, well let's look at how the water moves through this system. Mm -hmm. This system can actually take uh, 12 inches of rain in an hour. In an hour, uh -huh. okay. Well so, luckily we don't normally see that. No, we don't. <laughs> and it can also store up to eight inches of water at one time inside. So I'm just gonna kind of pour it on. You see how very quickly it, it moves through. Mm -hmm. So. Um, this is going to provide a lot of benefits uh, for the surrounding landscape. Um, what are some of those characteristics that this helps with? Well, this system has um, benefits. So you're decreasing the rate of water runoff. As we see, it's going in here and going to be stored. Mm -hmm. um, you also uh, have the opportunity to, re to release that slowly into the landscape. Mm -hmm. um, so again, decreasing the rate. Um, there's um, opportunities for for increasing water quality, so um, sediment and some oils and greases would get go into this system and get caught. Um, and that'll keep them from moving. That'll out keep into them the from moving out into the landscape. If there's um, if there's moisture in the system underneath, if that's maintained, then there's actually microorganisms that will grow in that moisture and actually treat some of that oil, um, decompose some of that oil and grease as well. So um, that's another exciting exciting piece. That's to interesting. It. Now once we have a system like this in place, if we have a walkway or a patio, are there special maintenance needs that we need to do with this? Well, just like any other hardscape, there's going to be some maintenance associated mm -hmm. with it. Uh, the concern with a permeable system is that you continue to allow efficient infiltration of the water mm -hmm. through the surface. Um, so, so in this application, the main concern there is keeping those joints sediment free. So mm -hmm. the way to do that is um, either va vacuuming the sediment out. Um, you can also, there's street sweepers that actually brush, can brush that out in a more commercial application. Mm -hmm. um, in a more homeowner application, um, using a shop vac to vacuum some of the small areas out would, could work. Also, um, a pressure washer um, could you, you don't want to spray it in, but you, you kind of spray it across the surface to wash some of that sediment to, to, to keep, the, to the, keep the, the porosity um, it very efficient. Um, in that process, some of that little, some of those little chips are going to come out, and you'll need to backfill those with fresh okay. chips. How often do we have to do this type of vacuuming or pressure washing? Uh, depends on the application how and how much use it's getting. But uh, I would I would look at it about every every kind of check it every six months, probably doing it every one to two years. But okay. but if you identify a problem where where uh, soil is is washing onto the paver system, then there's a, then there's an issue. Okay, and in between that, we want to just keep it well swept to keep sediment from collecting Very keep much the so. leaves and grass mm -hmm. clippings mm -hmm. off of it. And, that, and that'll, that'll increase the time you can go through without maintenance. Okay. okay. Uh, well, there's been so much interest in this. It's a wonderful project, and I know there's a lot of support from across the state. A lot of people are interested in looking at permeable systems. Yeah, yeah. Well, while putting this project together, we were encouraged and excited by all the support and pe participants, that, people that want to participate in the process. Um, we, all the um, paving materials, um, the concrete pavers were donated by Pavestone Company and the uh, Pavestone Store of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, we had um, SAC Engineering provided 
um, engineering services for us, um, that was, and um, we also had support from some agencies, partnership between um, Division of Environmental Quality as well as uh, ODOT um, helped support this process. So we're, we're very excited about it and um, looking, looking forward to uh, seeing, it, see, seeing it function over time. And seeing more of this uh, develop across the state as mm -hmm. well. Very much so. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.